Have you ever heard of fairy tales? What would you say is a recipe for a fairy tale? It needs to start with something like once upon a time or once long, long ago. It needs to have characters that are good and characters that are bad. And the bad guys have to lose out at the end of most fairy tales, right? There's a problem to be solved. There might be a person to be saved. And usually there's some kind of helper that uses some kind of magic, right? Fairy tales have magic. One of the most popular fairy tales ever is Cinderella. Cinderella has been told for hundreds of years all over the world. Many cultures have their own unique spin on the basic story. And by looking at them, we can learn some things about each of the cultures. The Cinderella story that most people know is the Disney version. Once there was a girl, and she lived with her stepmother and two mean stepsisters who made her do all the work all the time. And one day she got a letter in the mail and it was an invitation to a ball. And she wants to go so badly so her friends are helping her get ready, but they don't take her. And her fairy godmother has to come in with magic and get her ready and she meets the prince. And they have such a good time dancing and then the clock strikes midnight and she has to run down the stairs and her glass slipper falls off. And the prince makes a promise to visit every house in his whole kingdom until he finds the girl whose foot fits in the slipper. And then because Cinderella is the good character in the story, it fits her foot, of course, and she and the prince get married and live happily ever after. Cinderella is such a popular story that there's a children's book made called Glass Slipper, Gold Sandal, A Worldwide Cinderella. And Paul Fleischman wrote this book. Look at the end papers in here. You can see a map of the world. There are so many, so many more than this. But in this story, pieces of Cinderella stories from these areas of the world are included. Here's our title page with our title, our author and our illustrator and our publisher down here. And there's also an author's note. It says, a chameleon changes color to match its surroundings. Stories do the same. The earliest recorded Cinderella tale is thought to date from 9th century China. Traveling across the globe, it changed its clothes, but not its essence. That means not the basic part of the story or its feeling. Rivalry, that means there's good versus evil. Injustice, there's a problem and the dream of wrongs righted are universal. We want things that are broken in stories to be fixed, no matter our garments. That means no matter what clothes we wear. When the story reached France, it acquired the glass slippers and the coachmen mice familiar to Western readers, like that Disney version. More than a thousand other versions are known. So in this book, Bits and pieces of the stories from around the world are woven together, and the illustrator shows us that here's a piece of the story from Mexico. Here's a piece from Korea and from Iraq. From India and Ireland all throughout the world. This book is really beautiful. Rather than telling bits and pieces, over time, over the next few library classes, we're going to read some whole Cinderella stories from different places around the world. So let's get started with The Rough Face Girl. The Rough Face Girl was written by author Rafe Martin and illustrated by David Shannon. At the end of this story, second graders, I'm going to ask you to write a few things that are the same as the Disney Cinderella and some things that are different. So make sure you're thinking about that while I'm reading. I see another author's note here and it has some good information in it. It says that this is an Algonquin 
Indian Cinderella in its original form. So this is from a culture that is different from the Disney version. It also says that there have been some 1,500 or so versions of the basic Cinderella story type recorded so far. In each, the cruel and thoughtless at last get their just reward, as do those who are kind and good. It also says, the rough-faced girl remains one of the most magical, mysterious, and beautiful of all the Cinderella's. Let's see how this version goes. Once, long ago, there was a village by the shores of Lake Ontario. Off from the other wigwams of this village stood one great, huge wigwam. Painted on its sides were pictures of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and animals. And inside this wigwam, there was said to live a very great, rich, powerful, and supposedly handsome invisible being. However, no one could see him except his sister, who lived there too. Many women wanted to marry this invisible being, but his sister said, Only the one who can see him can marry him. Now in this village there lived a poor man who had three daughters. The two older daughters were cruel and hard-hearted, and they made their youngest sister sit by the fire and feed the flames. When the burning branches popped, the sparks fell on her. In time, her hands became burnt and scarred. Her arms, too, became rough and scarred. Even her face was marked by the fire, and her beautiful long black hair hung ragged and charred. And those two older sisters laughed at her, saying, Ha! You're ugly, you rough-faced girl! and they made her life very lonely and miserable indeed. One day, these two older sisters went to their father and said, Father, give us some necklaces. Give us some new buckskin dresses. Give us some pretty beaded moccasins. We're going to marry the invisible being. So their father gave them these things. Dressed in their finest, the two girls marched through the village. All the people pointed and stared. Oh, look at those beautiful girls, they said. Surely they shall marry the invisible being. And if those two girls were proud and hard-hearted before, they were even prouder now. They walked haughtily through the village. Haughtily means they're showing off. At last they came to the wigwam of the invisible being and there his sister and there was his sister waiting. Ooh, she doesn't look very friendly, does she? Why have you come? she asked. We want to marry the invisible being, they answered. That's why we're here. If you want to marry my brother, she replied, you have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen the invisible being? Of course we've seen him, they insisted. Can't you see how pretty we are? Can't you see the beautiful clothes we wear? Oh, yes, anyone can tell. We've truly seen the invisible being. All right, she said quietly. If you think you've seen him, then tell me what's his bow made of? And suddenly her voice was swift as lightning and strong as thunder. His, his b -b bow, they stammered in surprise. His uh, bow, we know, we know. But turning desperately to one another, they whispered, What shall we say? Let's say it's the oak tree. So they said, It's the oak tree. No said the sister of the invisible being. No. Oh, she saw at once how they lied. Tell me, she continued, if you think you've seen my brother, the invisible being, then what's the runner of his sled made of? Oh, we know, we know, cried those two sisters. 
But whispering feverishly again, they wondered, what shall we say? What shall we say? Let's say it's the green willow branch. No, said the sister when she heard, no, you have not seen my brother. Now go home. Just test us fairly, they exclaimed. We've seen him. Just don't ask us all these silly questions. All right, said the sister of the invisible being. Come with me. And she took them back to the great wigwam and sat them in the seats furthest from the entrance, the guests' seats. Soon they heard footsteps coming along the path. Then something stepped inside. Though they heard breathing, the two sisters still couldn't see a thing. Suddenly a great bow and a beaded quiver of arrows appeared in the air and were set down. But though those two girls sat there, their eyes wide, all through that night they never saw a thing more. And in the morning they had to go home ashamed. The next day the rough-faced girl went to her father and said, Father, may I please have some beads? May I please have a new buckskin dress and some pretty moccasins? I'm going to marry the invisible being, for wherever I look, I see his face. But her father sighed. Daughter, he said, I'm sorry. I have no beads left for you, only some little broken shells. I have no buckskin dress, and as for moccasins, all I have left are my own old, worn, cracked, and stretched out pair from last year, and they're much too big. But she said, whatever you can spare, I can use. So he gave her these things. Then she found dried reeds, and taking the little broken shells, she strung a necklace. She stripped birch bark from the dead trees and made a cap, a dress, and leggings. Then, with a sharp piece of bone, she carved in the bark pictures of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and animals. She went down to the lake shore and soaked the moccasins in the water until they grew soft. Then she molded them to her feet, but they were still too big and they flap, flap, flapped like duck's feet as she walked. Then all of the people came out of their wigwams. They pointed and stared. Look at that ugly girl, they laughed. Look at her strange clothes. Hey, 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 go home, you ugly girl. You'll never marry the invisible being. But the rough-faced girl had faith in herself, and she had courage. She didn't turn back. She just kept walking right through the village. As she walked, as she walked on, she saw the great beauty of the earth and skies spreading before her. And truly, she alone of all in that village saw in these things the sweet yet awesome face of the invisible being. Second graders, can you see it? Can you see mouth? Eyes. Can you see a big face there, the invisible being? At last she came to the lake shore, just as the sun was sinking behind the hills, and the many stars came glittering out like a fiery veil in the darkening sky overhead. And there, standing by the water's edge, was the sister of the invisible being, waiting. Now the sister of the invisible being was a wise woman. When she looked at you, she didn't see just your face or your hair or clothes, no. When she looked at you, she would look you right in the eyes and she could see all the way down to your heart. And she could tell if you had a good, kind heart or a cold, hard, and cruel one. And when she looked at the rough-faced girl, she saw at once that though her skin was scarred, her hair burnt, her clothes strange, she had a beautiful, kind heart. And so she welcomed her dearly, saying, Ah, my sister, why have you come? And the rough-faced girl replied, I have come to marry the invisible being. 
Ah, said the sister very gently now, if you want to marry him, you have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen my brother, the invisible being? And the rough-faced girl said yes. All right then, said the sister, if you have seen him, tell me what's his bow made of? And the rough-faced girl said, his bow? Why, it is the great curve of the rainbow. Ah, exclaimed the sister in excitement. Tell me, she asked, if you have seen my brother, the invisible being, what's the runner of his sled made of? And the rough-faced girl, looking up into the night sky, said, The runner of his sled? Why, it is the spirit road, the Milky Way of stars that spreads across the sky. Ah, cried the sister in wonder and delight, you have seen him. Come with me. And taking the rough-faced girl by the hand, she led her back to the great wigwam and sat her in the seat next to the entrance, the wife's seat. Then they heard footsteps coming along the path, closer and closer. The entrance flap of the wigwam lifted up, and in stepped the invisible being. And when he saw her sitting there, he said, At last we have been found out. Then smiling kindly, he added, and Oh, my sister, but she is beautiful. And his sister said, yes. The sister of the invisible being then gave the rough-faced girl the finest of buckskin robes and a necklace of perfect shells. Now bathe in the lake, she said, and dress in these. So the rough-faced girl bathed in the waters of the lake, Suddenly all the scars vanished from her body. Her skin grew smooth again, and her beautiful black hair grew in long and glossy as a raven's wing. Now anyone could see that she was indeed beautiful. But the invisible being and his sister had seen that from the start. Then at last the rough-faced girl and the invisible being were married. They lived together in great gladness and were never parted. <laughs>